everybody, it's Eugene Lichel here and welcome to Click3D. This is the program where we talk about photogrammetry and how you can use your digital camera and some software to make some really amazing 3D models. Today I thought we'd try something a little bit different and you can see here this is the iPhone. This is the new iPhone 12 which has LiDAR capability. So I'm going to be testing the phone to see what kind of data we can get out of the LiDAR. Now you may be wondering well how does this relate to photogrammetry? Well in truth what I'm going to be doing is testing an app that's called EveryPoint. And the EveryPoint app does an interesting thing. It actually leverages the LiDAR, but it fuses it with photogrammetry. And so when the LiDAR sort of drops off, you can depend on more of the photogrammetry data. And when the photogrammetry data has some problems, you can rely on some of the LiDAR data. So there's been a lot of noise online with respect to, you know, the, the, uh, the iPhone 12 LiDAR and, you know, really simply creating some uh, meshed data and stuff like that. Um, and to be honest with you, I haven't been all that impressed with the data. It looks pretty good, but in testing that I've been doing, uh, like the meshes come out really lumpy. Um, they're not highly accurate. Um, you know, they might be okay for doing some augmented reality and just kind of playing around and getting some, uh, you know, cute uh, models and stuff like that. But what I'm interested in here today is accuracy. How accurate is it really? So we're going to be doing three things. The first one is we're going to be scanning a vehicle and we're just going to be using the raw data that comes out of the iPhone. So basically, um, you know, scanning and then taking a look at what the point cloud data looks like. Okay, how accurate it is, you know, where it maybe breaks down or where it performs really well. Then what we're going to be doing is we're going to be trying it again with the every point app and that's the one that will take the LiDAR data and the photogrammetry data and then fuse it together. Finally, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to scan the car with a terrestrial laser scanner. It's the Faro S350. It's the main instrument that I use for my work. It's dependable, reliable, and I know it's uh, super accurate. So, you know, in the ranges that we're going to be working in, you know, it's probably on the order of a couple of millimeters or so. So I'm going to take the data at the end and do a full 3D comparison. So I'm not just interested in a few points uh, like here and there and just comparing measurements. I'm really interested in the overall point cloud data to see how it performs. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, I'm going to get outside. Now I actually did record some of this the other day, but I'm going to be doing the LiDAR part and uh, just showing you pretty much what I'm going to be doing uh, moving around the car. So let's get started. Okay, so we're going to do the scanning here with the, uh, with the EverPoint app and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fire that up and um, I'm going to choose just basic LiDAR, okay? So there's nothing really um, too crazy coming out of here. And I'm going to choose a dense, um, sort of a medium density for the points. And I'm going to make three loops around this car. So let me start from there. Uh, I'll start from this. Actually, I'm going to start from the middle of the other side. I'm going to go up high and go around. Then I'm going to go around the middle and then I'm going to go around the bottom. So let's give that a go. All right, here we go. So I'm going to start the scan up high. And I just want to make sure that I've got uh, the top of the vehicle here. I want to make sure I get those points, so I got to get up high. And one thing I will say about the new iPhone is the tracking, or you know, the uh, uh, the accelerometers, or the gyros, uh, or the IMUs, or whatever they got in here, whatever magic they got in here, um, it really tracks fairly well. So that part there is definitely in. Uh, our favor. And you'll see I'm, uh, well, I don't know, I'm a couple meters away from the vehicle as I go around. So this is my second loop. I'm kind of focusing on the main body of the car. And when I wrap around the other end, I'm going to uh, go down and sort of focus on the ground a little bit more. And I want to make sure to get these parking lines in there at the bottom because they're kind of my, oh, they're kind of my uh, guide over here. So I'm going to make sure that I get these in at the bottom here, get down at the bottom, like that, okay, and almost done here. Okay, so getting down low, and that's about it. So we'll have a look at how that uh, works out, and what I'll do is I'll show you what I did uh, with the uh, EverPoint app using both the uh, LiDAR and Fusion of uh, LiDAR and photogrammetry, and then we'll come back to that. And I, I actually recorded that the other day, but I'll pop it on here and you'll have a look for yourself. 
everybody, it's Eugene Lee Show, and here today I've got a couple of instruments beside me. Uh, one is an iPhone, the new iPhone 12 with LiDAR on it, and I also have a Ferrofocus S350 scanner. Today what I'm going to be doing is doing a check of the accuracy of the LiDAR on the uh, iPhone. And actually, it's not really the LiDAR, it's actually an app called EveryPoint. And I want to check to see what kind of accuracy we can get out of this. So, uh, to be honest with you, the LiDAR that's coming out of the iPhone is okay, but I'm not really all that impressed with it. So, what's interesting about the EveryPoint uh, app is that they're fusing two technologies. So, they're using photogrammetry and they're using LiDAR and they're putting it together. So. When the LiDAR drops off, the photogrammetry will provide you with uh, some better data and vice versa. So that's really interesting. On the ferro scanner side here, uh, this is a terrestrial laser, laser scanner. Uh, within the ranges that we're dealing with, we're going to have like a one to two millimeter range. And so this is going to be our, let's call it our ground truth. And we're going to compare this to this. And we'll probably do that inside of Cloud Compare. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set up to um, document this vehicle behind me and I'm going to do that first with the iPhone and then next I'm going to go with the laser scanner. So let's get to it. Okay, so I've got the phone here. There really isn't much to it. Um, I'll show the screen uh, uh, separately uh, on the view here. But basically, I'm just going to choose video plus, uh, plus LiDAR. So I'm going to do that and then I've got to name it. So I'm just going to give it a quick name. I'm going to call this my car like that and I'm going to go ahead do that. A window pops up it has like a depth map on it and so what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna go around the vehicle maybe three times so I'm gonna start up high do like a mid and then go down and do a circle at the very bottom so I'm gonna tilt this just a little bit just so I get down and like that and I'm gonna start scanning in a second here so I'm gonna go up high I'm gonna start okay and it's flashing so it looks like it's starting to scan so I'm just gonna move around like this and start going around, do my first circle. And of course, I can't really see the phone, so I'm just kind of backing off a bit just to make sure I get everything that I need. And I guess I should have also mentioned that I'm gonna use the parking lines on the ground to create a uh, uh, kind of set of controls. So I'm gonna make sure I get that there and I'm gonna turn back and get this part of the car. So now I'm gonna go down to about eye level and I'm gonna start moving around again like this. Uh, it's kind of shiny and reflective and many of you might know that uh, cars are not the best for uh, this sort of thing because uh, they give a lot of problems with reflections and such. So I'm just going to go around this way and I'm almost completed this next circle and the next thing I'm going to do is get down a little bit lower and do the bottom part of the vehicle. Alrighty, so we're back on this side now I'm going to start dropping down and I'm just going to make sure that I get just nice and close the bottom and part of the ground get the tires okay around the front and I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side and then once I get back we should be done and there seems to be enough texture on the ground I should be okay but I'm gonna make sure I get the back end down a little bit lower okay and then I'm also gonna make sure that I pick up the lines here on the ground and that's it I'm gonna stop this right here Okay, so I'm good, so I'm going to go done, and that's it. Uh, that's pretty much it for documenting with this. Now, um, in order for me to finish and get an actual product or some kind of a point cloud out of this, I, it has to be uploaded and processed, and then I'll get the, uh, the uh, point cloud downloaded again. So, but that's pretty much it. The documentation part is done. It's pretty simple, three circles around the vehicle. Now let's switch over to the laser scanner. Okay, so this is the Ferro laser scanner, and on this one I have it set up so that it's at a 1 8th resolution at three times quality. And basically what that means is at 1 8th resolution I get about 12 millimeters of point spacing at 10 meters. So if I'm at one meter away from the car, then I'm going to be at about 1.2 millimeters. So I should have a really, really dense point cloud, and we're going to go around and do the same type of thing from a number of different positions. Uh, this is going to take us a little bit longer because it's going to take us over three minutes for every scan and that's for the laser scan and for the photographs so let's get started i'll start from this end over here and we'll plant that here level it off a bit i'm going to move this up just a tiny bit higher and that's it let's wait and see what happens and we'll go from there OK, 
Okay, so we're done with the laser scanning right now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take all this data, we're gonna process it, and then we're gonna see how they compare. So let's go over to the computer. Okay, so what I thought I would do here is just look at some of the scans that we did for the car. And I actually tried this three times and I'm gonna show you all three on the phone here. Um, it's not that promising right off the bat. So um, in looking at this car, you can see there's all kinds of artifacts here. So especially on the side, um, it's there must be something wrong with um, going around three times. It doesn't actually f register these uh, you can see there's like two other doors there on the side. So there is something obviously going wrong here, even on the roof here on the top. And I would expect there'd be some noise, but this is just uh, terrible here. So I actually tried this again. I went back and let's try to look at the second one and see what we got here. So this is another trial and you can see that I've got a lot of noise uh, up on the side. And again, the, the, top of the roof here is giving me some problems but when I go back to the side again I can see that there's um, sort of the top part of the door has sort of come undone there and it just doesn't look crisp there's, there's all kinds of noise and I can see there was some mismatches on the ground uh, as well so I'm just not all that pleased with this I can see here um, that it just looks really really noisy a lot of noise off the side and then even uh, this other one that I just did, kind of quickly going around just to see if there's something strange going on. But um, again, if you look at the door here, there's uh, clearly a problem here. And on the roof, again, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of these noisy points that are coming off on that area. So um, this is not something that I'm all that eager to test. And I can see that there's some problems here. So I don't know, I may just give up on this because this is not what I was expecting. I thought it was going to be a little bit better than this. But maybe what I'll do is I'll bring in one of the point clouds in Cloud Compare just so people can see and we'll go from there. All right, so I brought in uh, some of the data from just the LiDAR points only uh, that come straight out of the iPhone. And you'll see that it's not all that attractive. And this is the uh, one of the issues that I had where I had these two doors. So for every loop that I went around, uh, for whatever reason, it didn't clear out this part or didn't figure out that it was registered on this part of the vehicle. So you can see there's quite a bit of noise. Um, you know, it's not really crisp where the license plate is and up top here, a ton of noise off the edge. So um, not all that impressed with it. Actually, I just noticed here too, um, on the back side of the vehicle here, you can see there's actually two sides here. So it's kind of overlapping at the back. So for whatever reason, uh, the uh, creating loops, I thought that was actually gonna help give it um, a little bit more to work with and maybe do some kind of a registration where it closes out the loop, but that's clearly not the case. So in this regard, um, this is not a great model. And let me switch to the other one. So I'm gonna shut this one off. This is the second one that we did. Um, the third one had the same problems, but you can see, you know, I've got a lot of noise here, uh, a lot of noisy points off the top and a lot of points off the side. So there, there's clearly some issues. Uh, this was in the shade, just so you know, it wasn't in direct sunlight. It was, um, there was a bit of sun in some cases, but it wasn't in this particular area. It was being blocked by the building. So um, this is what we've got. Maybe what I'll do is just to kind of continue with the test is I'll crop this vehicle out and I will uh, clean it up a bit, just uh, give it a little bit of help here, and then we'll see how it compares with the, uh, the laser scanner data, and we'll go from there. So let's look at the data here, and I'll show you what I'm um, doing here and sort of explain it. So the first thing that I want to do is just look at the general models and sort of say, you know, how well they look in terms of cleanliness and crispness, and also in terms of scale. So what you're looking at on the screen right now is the Faro laser scanner data. And you can see that it looks quite crisp. It's quite clean. The ground is uh, very, very clean and crisp. And so this is why we're using uh, this particular model as the ground truth. Now the, the top here, I could have gotten a little bit more data by getting a little bit higher with the scanner, but that, that's okay. I think for what we're after, uh, today it should be absolutely fine and as you go to the other side same thing nice and crisp clean data you can make out a lot of the little details which is great um, now on the parking lines that were on the bottom here 
I took a quick measurement and it's about 6.087. So let's say 6.09, it's getting close to, you know, 6.09 or so. And that's sort of from this corner to this corner on the, uh, on the ground there between the lines. So this particular model looks really, really great. Let's look at the, just the LiDAR data from the Apple iPhone. Okay, so this is the Apple iPhone LiDAR data and I've done a little bit of cleanup uh, on this, not too, too much, but I actually did more cleanup on another model and I'll explain that a bit later. But you can see right off the bat, it's very fuzzy. There's a lot of noise, not as crisp on the details, but you know, generally okay. And when I take a measurement between these lines here, uh, where the parking lines were, I get 6.04. So that's about you know, uh, almost five centimeters uh, different. So there's obviously a scaling issue here or some kind of a, an accuracy issue just right off the bat. So that's okay. You know, for a general model, uh, this is the starting point. And I'm just looking at this briefly. What I'm going to do after is actually rescale the model or basically register all the models together to the point cloud. And then that will adjust the scale to get them closer. So let's move on to the every point data and let's see what that looks like. Okay, so this is the every point data and right off the bat, you'll notice that I'm getting a lot more around the vehicle and on the building and I thought that's interesting. But this is now where we are combining the LiDAR data from the phone with photogrammetry. So it's capturing video and it's processing those frames uh, to help reconstruct and recreate the model. The one thing you'll notice right off the bat when you look at this model is how crisp it is. The other thing that I'll note here is that the colors appear to be more true uh, even when compared to the laser scanner and that just has to do with you know the video or the sensor that's in there um, the data on the side of the vehicle looks really good um, not a lot of noise there's noise down here in the bottom and I found that in scanning vehicles um, there is a bit down at the bottom here typically with the every point app but um, you know, easily uh, removable there. But I, I really like how the sides look um, on the roof here. Now I was lifting up the phone to get up here, but you'll notice that I get some pretty good data and, the, and you know, from the LiDAR and it seems uh, full or, or relatively full. And I really wasn't trying all that hard and you saw how quickly I went around this car and I did three loops. Now unlike the LiDAR data you'll see that I don't get any doubling up of the doors. Um, you'll see that back here it looks very very crisp. So that's good too. Now on the scale on the ground here you'll see that I have 6.13. So on our uh, laser scanner data, we had about 6.09. So we're about four centimeters higher. So on the uh, iPhone uh, app, LiDAR, just the LiDAR alone, we were about four or five centimeters lower and here we're about four or five centimeters higher. So uh, neither appears to be accurate, um, uh, highly accurate anyway, uh, right out of the gate in terms of just the some of the scaling here. So there's a scaling issue and some of that needs to be corrected for which we can do in cloud compare. So let me explain what I'm going to be doing from here so that it's clear. And I'm going to take each of the three models, or I should say the two models, I'm going to be taking the Apple LiDAR uh, only data, and I'm going to be taking the every point data, which is the fusion of the LiDAR data and photogrammetry. And I am going to scale those. Well, first of all, I'm going to isolate some of this data, uh, clean it up a bit more, and then I'm going to scale both of them to the laser scanner data. So they'll be sitting right on top of one another. And uh, when you register, I can also adjust the scale. So basically to make it a fair test, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and scale each of the two models as closely as possible to the uh, Faro laser scanner data, which is our ground truth. Once I do that, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to do a cloud to cloud comparison. So instead of just looking at a couple of, you know, individual points here, what I'm going to be doing is looking at the overall model and looking at, you know, millions of points and seeing how they fit uh, within one another. Um, so let's try that out. And when I come back, I'll just have that ready up on my screen. 
All right, so I have aligned all the data and made all the comparisons. And so now it's time to look at the results. So what I have, this is the Faro laser scanner data that's in front of me. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the uh, every point data. So you can see that's sitting on top there. And I'm going to turn on the LiDAR data only from the uh, iPhone and you'll see that that's sitting on top. So they're basically all on top of each other and I've tried to, you know, scale them as best as I can and get them aligned uh, as best as I can. So the comparison here will in fact depend on how well you align these. So there can be some uh, plus or minus differences if somebody were to try this on their own. Uh, however, um, I think uh, based on the type of results that we're getting, you'll get to see the um, uh, the, the general idea here. So let's start with the, let's start with the LIDAR only data. So let me shut off some of this. Let me go into the LIDAR only and let me show you the scalar field. So what I'm going to be showing you here is how well the points compared to the Faro laser scanner data. Okay. So when they're sit, when the two vehicles are sitting on top of each other, it's going to start with the Faro data and it's going to go out and start looking for the closest points. And then it's going to document that particular distance. So what you're looking at this particular heat map, uh, blue is good where we, wherever we get bl uh, blue color, that means that the errors are low. Um, and as you start moving to red, that means that they are going to be, uh, at a close to about five centimeters or or greater. So in this particular model, you can see that I've got some red around the front and you know, it's getting uh, in between on the yellows on, on the bottom. So this side is, you know, blue and yellow. There's a little bit of a mix here. Um, but, um, you know, this side's blue and then it goes red. So there was some, there was obviously some problems with some of the points that are out here. Um, but again, um, you know, it's, it's okay for an overall model. I think, uh, if you're looking for several centimeters of accuracy, um, but if you're looking for something that is much lower, like on the order of a couple of millimeters, um, then, you know, this is not going to be useful. And one of the things that I like to do here is I like to look at the histogram for this. So if we break this out, this is a distribution of all the points, um, up to about five centimeters. And what we can do here is we can put a little slider across here. And what I'm going to show you here is that when you go to one centimeter, the one centimeter mark, it's going to tell you that about 54% of the points, okay, are below one centimeter, which is pretty good. And then when you start getting to about two centimeters, you're about 78%. And then when you get to three centimeters, you are at about 92%. Okay. And of course, if we go to five centimeters here, like way out here, we're almost at hundred percent of the points. Okay. So the, the cap here is about five centimeters, but, um, again, what, what, I, what I'm looking at here is how many of the points are within one centimeter and we're down around the 50% range. Okay. Let's look at the every point data now, and I'm going to turn that on here and I'm going to shut off the Faro data and I need to turn on the color ramp. So just give me a second here and look, turn on the scalar field. Okay, here we go here. So what you'll see here is a similar kind of thing. You'll see a little bit of blue, uh, blue. Um, we don't get as much red, but we do get some red up on the top here. Okay. A little bit over here and a little bit over there, um, on the sides, blue, Okay, so you're getting a lot of blue uh, sort of around the edges of things and on the ground for sure. So that matches up very well with the uh, Faro laser scanner data. But let's have a look at the distributions now and see what uh, what they they look like. And I've set the scale the same. So they're both set to cap off at about five centimeters. Anything above five centimeters, I'm not going to worry about. Um, that's way too much anyway. So let's uh, open up the histogram here and let's look at how these compare. So right off the bat, I can see that there's a lot more points. And if I go to the one centimeter mark here, 
okay, somewhere around here or so, I'm getting close to 74 or 75%, okay? So before we were down around 53% or so, now we're at about 73, 73.5%. That means that there are a lot more points which are more accurate, which is good. And now when you go to two centimeters here, Okay, we are getting close to 90%. We're at about 80%. So what that tells me right off the bat is uh, we, for us to get to 90%, we had on the other vehicle or on the LiDAR points only, we had to go up to at least three centimeters. Uh, but here, if you go up to three centimeters, you'll see that we're already at 95, 96%. So what this is telling me is that the majority of the points uh, by fusing the LiDAR with the photogrammetry, um, whatever magic they're doing there between the two is definitely helping the overall accuracy. So that's really, really good to know. Um, the other thing, as I said, in just looking at the point cloud, if I go back to the color, um, there's no denying that the quality of the data here, the crispness, the colors, and everything else just looks much, much better. So um, I think I'm going to leave it at that. Um, I'll let you guys be the judge there. Um, but, you know, clearly there seems to be a benefit with fusing two technologies together with every point. And um, I want to thank every point, uh, the people there for um, they've made everything accessible to me. They've been very honest about letting me talk about all the errors and everything else. So um, good on them. But I really like the data that they're providing here. I think this could be extremely useful uh, for, you know, whatever, if you're doing accident reconstruction and uh, that sort of thing. And I'll show you one more thing that I was able to do with the app before we leave here. So just to hang on while I switch screens. Okay, so this is the final thing that I'm going to be showing you here, but this got me pretty excited because what I was able to do with the EveryPoint app was uh, I put it on a pole just like you saw me in this particular video and I walked around the parking lot near my office here and this is the data set that I got um, with about you know, 10 minutes, less than 10 minutes of just kind of walking around, maybe five minutes of walking. I just held it up on the pole, walked around, and you can see here that I was able to get this entire lot. Now, I have done some tests on this, um, but I won't report anything just now, but let me just say that it looks quite promising. Um, but as you can see, getting information like this from just a phone is super useful and the fusion of photogrammetry and lidar i think is a great uh, idea it's a great concept and a great technology so um, i'm going to leave it at that and just make some closing remarks well there you have it folks i found that pretty interesting trying to see what the raw iphone data uh, looks like when it comes out just of the phone as is without any kind of you know special treatment or anything like that um, and also the every point app which fuses photogrammetry and lidar together i was really enthused about what they have there i think they need to do some work and i believe uh, from what i understand it's still at the initial stages there's a lot of uh, work and development that can be done but uh, from what I'm looking at initially, the accuracy that's coming out of the EverPoint app is much better than, you know, maybe some of the other apps that you're going to be using with the uh, iPhone. So uh, that does it for Click3D. I want to thank you all for watching and there'll be another video coming shortly. Thanks a lot and have a good one. Bye bye.